back to the Christmas Carol Countdown. Today we're going to be talking about a 1923 silent version. I originally thought this was going to be a 1913 silent version that was eventually called Old Scrooge, but apparently that wasn't what I found and I haven't been able to find that one, so maybe that one can be next year's if I find it. But anyways, I found this one. It was just a half hour long thing. Although, in some ways, it felt longer than half an hour. <laughs> it only credits four people, and then it seems to miscredit them. So, you know, if you want to know who somebody is out of the four people that show up, look it up and try and use your judgment, because Fred was not played by a 63-year-old man. <laughs> Jonathan was confused at first, thinking that Bob Cratchit might be Scrooge, because he was looking like he had a physical problem, but I think it was just supposed to indicate that the office was extremely cold. Plus he just looked kind of old too, but Scrooge looked even older, so. They had one person come asking for charity. They had a little boy caroling who ended up getting smacked over the head. The main focus really was between Scrooge and his nephew, where they definitely added stuff in that wasn't in the book. Usually you see a lot more to do with the Cratchits. They include Fred too, but they it was mostly on Bob and they left out his family completely unless the poor boy out there caroling who got smacked was supposed to be one of his children. But they never indicate that. It was not Tiny Tim. And Tiny Tim is such a huge part of the story. Yeah, that's, that's the thing I found weirdest about this version was Tiny Tim was nowhere to be found. They really could have um, expanded on Scrooge's backstory. They really didn't expand much on any part of, not just the backstory, but like the present, the, the ghost of the past, present, and future. They weren't there very long at all. The first half of the movie was like pretty much dedicated to Scrooge in his office with the various characters. And most of the second half was dedicated to the ghost, but since it's only like 25 minutes, that's maybe 10 minutes, and that's for all three ghosts. So the best part of the story was cut very short. They were only there for a little bit each time, and nothing much happened with them except for them explaining their motivations. We should probably talk about the music as well, because I don't know if this is for all versions or all releases of this film, at least recent ones, but... There was some strange musical choices in the copy that I found of this movie because it was all obviously added much later than when the film was made because there was, I don't know, some of it sounded very 90s, like there was some saxophone and harp mixed into one song. The beginning song sounds like a carol from the 60s, maybe. I think they just found a whole bunch of music that wouldn't get copyright claimed and stuck it on the film. <laughs> I would have, it would have been nice to see maybe piano music that just followed the mood and gave mm -hmm. you more of the feeling of that period. And I also feel like they tried to be somewhat period correct with the costuming, but I think you do get a lot of vibe of maybe the present time or maybe the earlier part of the 1900s mixed in. Don't quote me. You can watch it and see what you think, but... That's basically it. There was not a whole lot to this movie that was worth talking about at length. It was just a truncated version of the story. We got the whole version of the movie. They just made a very short version of the story. It covers a lot of the bases of the story and it has a happy ending and once again, it's historically interesting because you do get some of that 20s vibe in it, but... That was basically what I was thinking. It's an interesting movie if you are looking at it from a historical perspective. If you're looking for a truly entertaining version of A Christmas Carol, look elsewhere. <laughs> if you're a history nerd, go for it. 
I said as I was watching this, this simultaneously feels too long and too short <laughs> because it draw, draw, it was drawn out and they cut out so many parts of it. So I didn't find it that entertaining, but it was interesting to watch it for a historical perspective. It was a little bit funny, though. A yeah, li- a little bit. Sort of. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I think that's going to be all for this episode. Next week, my friend Rachel Wagner is going to be joining me. She's going to be picking out three obscure versions of the story for us to watch. Um, I'm not sure what she's picking, except I know she has picked out one called A Diva's Christmas Carol. And I'm not sure what to expect with that, because I've never seen it, and I never heard of it till she mentioned it. So, you can look forward to that, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.